Thanks, Rob. It's good to be back. I don't know why you had me back, but it's good to be back. Um, how often do we hear students saying that they're excited, curious, happy, proud, or gobsmacked? Um, what about being in our school or classroom is worthwhile, inspiring, or is giving them a sense of accomplishment? Even saying things like, I feel great, I feel like I've really achieved, or I've put a lot of effort into this and it really turned out great, and even I made something on the computer into a reality. These thoughts and feelings and, and the, the statements are, are actually a reality at my school and have been for the last three years. And all we had to do was give students the opportunity to explore 3D design and 3D printing um, openly. What do you think you would see if you gave students that opportunity? That opportunity to design and create anything they wanted if they were put, willing to put their time into it. Surprisingly, the first thing we saw in our college was an increase in wonder motivation and student sense of achievement. If you've never seen a 3D printer printing, go and do it, all right? Go now, okay? Because it is captivating. But what is even more bewitching is watching that printer create something that you've designed, something that was before only in your head. It's an intoxicating feeling sitting there watching the printer create something, take that thought and make it into a physical object. And I've lost many an hour sitting there like, Ooh, all right, it's, it's, I, I cannot express to you the feeling of that's mine, literally. Um, so right now at my school, we're offering a 3D printing class. The first time that we've done that, students are actually actively exploring 3D design and 3D printing in a classroom setting instead of just, and I, I use the word just very cautiously there, um, just outside, so just an extracurricular activity. And I say just cautiously because I don't want to degrade that. I think it's a very valuable experience. Um, the students in this elective are very engaged. They're staying back behind class to watch the printer print. They're spending time at home designing things to bring in and print on the school's printer. And as students um, see the printer print other people's things and hold other people's objects, they begin to think about what this technology can offer them. And they begin to push the boundaries about what they think is possible. And as students come into the class and say, hey, can I try this or can I do that? And, and the answer is always, well, let's try it or design it and we'll see how it turns out. Um, their sense of wonder just increases and so does their engagement. As a mini project to, to learn the basics of designing in a 3D space, students were tasked with designing a common everyday object. That's what one student created. A nice looking set of headphones, yeah? Not functional, but what do you think his, his reaction was when it was suggested to him that with a little bit of time and effort, he could actually take that design and make them functional? He could have his own set of custom 3D printed headphones that actually worked. His eyes lit up and at the same time his jaw actually hit the floor. Um, unfortunately for me, his passion has taken him elsewhere because I really wanted to see how they turned out. You know how students start these projects and you go, oh, I really want to see how they turned out and then they go somewhere else? I'm hoping he's going to come back. And I think this is one of the great things that 3D printing in a school community can provide. It gives students the ability to follow a passion. And I want to share a story about one passion project that started three years ago. So I want to take you back to 2013. My school has just bought our first 3D printer. We run a year nine project-based learning program for the second half of the year for year nine. So I waltz into the year nine program and I go, hey guys, we've now got a 3D printer. Who wants to have a play? This is what I got, stunned silence. However, not long after, I did have a student come and approach me and he said, um, I want to design and print a working clock. <laughs> what? That's a pretty ambitious project. Oop, not supposed to say that yet. That's a pretty <laughs> ambitious project. But, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? If you're willing to put the time in, so be it. That, now you can see it, is what he created. All right. It, absolutely blew my mind. What you can see there are 13 different gears, 48 total pieces, including the laser cut front and back, all designed by the student, prototyped by the student, and put together by the student. I had no part of that. You could give me those pieces and I had no idea how to put it together. What did he learn while he went through this process, do you think? I don't know the list, but I can give you some ideas. I know for a fact that he had to learn the software he designed it in. Software that in the engineering design world is the industry standard. And I don't know of any other teacher at our college that knows it, so he learnt it all by himself. All right. I don't know how a regular clock works, but I do know how this one works. And if you can manage to rotate that second hand at 360 
360 degrees a minute, you know, a full rotation, that clock will never lose time. To get that to work, he had to work out the ratios of all the gears, split it across multiple gears, and then get all the gears meshing, not only in two dimensions, but three dimensions. He came to me one day with a set of gears, Mr. Alfred, I want to print this. Yep, no worries, so he printed it. His first set of gears, complete not a flop. They were really heavy, they were solid, not like these guys with the gaps between them, but more importantly, the teeth actually wouldn't mesh. So he had gears trying to go together and they just wouldn't rotate together. He went home, completely redesigned all of his gears in one night. What sort of passion does that show? When he came back into the next school, he, I asked him how. I said, how did you do that? He said, oh, you know, it's something about the pitch and the angle and this and that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what I wanted to know is how you did it. I don't care what you did. I want to know how. His answer was Google and his older brother. <laughs> his older brother was studying engineering at the time, but the only information his brother gave him was the pitch and the angle and all that sort of stuff. And then he went to Google and worked out all the mathematics to get that to work for him. What blew my mind here is after one night, he came into school and had 40, gears of 40 plus teeth meshing with gears of less than 10. Now, I didn't even think that was possible. I'm not a physics teacher, so don't, don't criticise me for that. I didn't even think it was possible, but he had it running perfectly smooth. Throughout the whole project, he displayed engineering skills, skills for his chosen career. He wants to go down the engineering path. He kept a, a, a sketchbook detailing his designs and the process he went through and I've not seen a sketch of how this went together. So that design is actually in his head of how all the gears mesh. Um, back in 2013 when he first created it, he intended to sell that as a kit so you could put it together. Um, come back to today, he still wants to sell it, <laughs> but he's also redesigning it. He's in year 12 now and he's taking some time, I think it's his sort of downtime to redesign this clock. He, I asked him why, and I said, what are you trying to do? And he said, well, I want to make it simpler to print, and I want to make it easier to put together. Oh, and I want to put the day and the month on it too, and I'm like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, you, ca you can't add more to it, and it's, not gonna, it's, it's just not going to work. Now, I have no idea how he's going to do it. I don't even know how he did this. But I can tell you I'm really excited and really looking forward to going through that journey with him and printing his final product yet again. This whole idea of following passion projects and, and providing them and selling them is, is a great opportunity that 3D printing and the maker community in general can provide because it is so open. It has these opportunities for students to, to throw a design out there into the world, get feedback and revisit it. So it provides that really authentic audience. There are also heaps of competitions out there that students can enter to win 3D printers as prizes, which is a pretty big draw card for competitions. Um, not long ago, there was a competition based on sound. All right? Now, as an educator, I call these competitions design briefs. And the design brief was really quite open. It was 3D print something that makes sound. That competition ended a long time ago. I made a few whistles. I didn't win. I was really disappointed. Um, but I've got a really ear-pissing whistle that my four-year-old loves running around the house whistling, and it drives me insane. But it did get one student in my class interested enough to go, oh, I want to make a drum. No, I just want to make one drum. I want to make a drum kit. I'm like, OK, cool. So he actually went home, measured up his full-size drum kit at home. He obviously plays the drums and enjoys that. And he started designing a scale version, a desktop size version to fit on his desk at home. Now, he's nowhere near finished. I think, I'm hoping that we can print a prototype before he goes on holidays for Easter so that he can put it together and have a bit of a play over that break. Um, but we're regularly meeting to, to discuss what design limitations there are with 3D printing and, and possible workarounds. And he's also involving his family in the design process. He's going home and discussing his project, coming back into class with, with things that have come up at home and, oh, Dad said something about this. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Why don't you try it? Or Mum said, what about if we do this? That's great. I don't often get parent engagement in my classroom, so it's really good. Now, that sounds amazing, and I haven't got pretty pictures to show you as good as the clock of his drums. I'm sure I'll have them in three years. Um, but what's interesting here is future plans. Once he gets his drums printed, he wants to put sensors in them. And then next semester, when he does our computer programming course, he wants to connect those sensors to a computer and make an electronic drum kit so the computer plays the sound of the drums. So he wants to design an electronic desktop-sized drum kit that's only here at the moment. Well, it's not here, it's in his head. Um, and I just, like, 
What's, what an idea. What a process to go through. What I've shared so far are wonderful examples of increasing student engagement, giving students the opportunity to follow their passion, and providing them with an authentic audience. But this next story for me is what I believe to be possibly the most powerful um, use of 3D printing within my own school, and something that I am humbled and proud to be a part of. Everyone know what this is? Yep, yep. periodic table. You all learnt the chemistry of the elements this way, yeah? So it's designed, and I want to stress the word design. It's the periodic table as the science community has designed it to be. It's designed the way it is to, to explain to you, or students, or whoever is reading this table, the chemistry behind it, the, the connections, the relationships between all those elements. This is how one of our students was expected to learn it. All right. His list was, of course, in Braille because he was blind. Um, but all he had was an alphabetical list of the elements. Side by side, compare them. Are the learning possibilities the same? They're not. Nowhere near it. So what 3D printing offered us was the ability to make that learning opportunity the same. We had some design requirements we needed to take into account. The first one was size. In discussions with the student, he said, reading Braille across poster-sized things is really hard. And that was pretty much the only product on the market at the time. So I'm like, OK, it's got to be small. Now, Braille is pretty much a set size, and you know, all of that comes into play there as well. So we decided that it must only have the relevant information for each element, which for us turned out to be the chemical symbol and the <coughs> atomic number. Right, so he could still refer back to his list if he found that necessary. The other final constraint we had on our design was the fact that the teacher wanted this particular grouping shown, because that was his main teaching focus for this unit. So the prototype process was lengthy. We've mentioned prototyping earlier today, wherever they've gone, they're hiding out the back, are they? Um, the prototype process was lengthy, but I can tell you what we created was absolutely everything the team of people involved could have hoped it would be. That's it there. It's not the best photo, but it does get it all in one. All right. What you can see is the periodic table, basically the same shape as what the sided version is. And there's, it's all written in Braille. The Braille is actually part of the model that's printed. The changing heights designate the different groups the teacher wanted to, to talk about. Does that now, the, sorry, the great thing about that is now that the vision impaired student has the same learning opportunity in that class as the sighted students. All right? and it doesn't have to all be that great and fancy. Um, this first foray into designing for vision impaired students got me thinking and I had a really good relationship with this student and I had a, quite a few good robust discussions with him about what he found difficult to learn in a, in a sighted classroom. Um, he mentioned 3D geometry and maths was really quite tricky for him. I said okay, let's print the models. Let's print the questions, like print actually physically print the pieces for those questions for you. He went through the unit and he gave me his feedback at the end and said, that really helped me understand how compound areas and volumes can be made if, if you know the base shapes. So that physically being able to take shapes and add shapes together for him was a priceless learning experience. It cost the school less than $5. What could this approach to resourcing do for any student struggling with concepts like that? What I've shared today are just some reasons for bringing 3D printing into your learning community. All right? In fact, there are many more, and, and many of them have already been discussed. All right? We as teachers, or as, as educators, are supposed to be preparing our students for a future we can't predict. There are not many areas that have not already been impacted by 3D printing. There are 3D printers in space. They're 3D printing houses, cars, bikes, and as mentioned, they're already 3D printing human body parts. They're printing in metal, plastic, wood, rubber, even chocolate and sugar for those of you out there who would like that. All right, what does this tell you? It tells you that these skills, these 3D design skills and 3D printing skills are probably gonna be a fairly big part of this future. Imagine having access to a, a 3D printer in your classroom that would allow you to rapidly prototype educational models specific to you and what you wanted to teach. Or well, take a different approach. Imagine letting students design teaching aids to support other students and the learning that's going to happen if we actually achieve that. 
getting students involved in this online community, this maker movement, this sharing of designs, writing instructions of how to put it all together, is going to increase their communication and leadership skills. Allowing them to design or download others and modify their designs also increases their numeracy skills. Scale, proportion, measurement. All right. I've had enough. I'm right on 15 minutes. 3D printers aren't going away. All right. You need to get out there, get involved. Give your students the opportunity to make. Give them the opportunity to make their own future. Thank you. <laughs>